Hello everyone, I'm Daryl Heath with the College of Arts, Letters, and Sciences here at the University of Arkansas Little Rock. Some of ULR's best natural assets are the many trees and open green spaces that we have, as well as Coleman Creek, which runs the entire length of the campus. These features help provide homes to various kinds of urban wildlife. Over the many years that I've been affiliated with ULR, I've had the pleasure of seeing at one time or another such bird and mammal species as Brazilian free bats, groundhogs, mink, skunks, gray fox, coyotes, great horned owls, red-breasted grosbeaks, red-tailed hawks, Mississippi kites, and great blue herons. Our campus is even home to a number of different reptile species. During the spring and summer months, it's possible to see oh, common snapping turtles, box turtles, broad-headed skinks, and yes, we even have a number of different snake species. If you stroll along Coleman Creek, you might just get the chance to see one of our numerous water snake species, like this diamondback water snake. Water snakes, while sometimes confused for the venomous cottonmouth or water moccasin, are a bit temperamental but an otherwise harmless group of snakes that are often seen basking in the sunlight as they sprawl out on the grass, rocks, logs, or an overhanging tree limb in order to warm themselves up enough to go about their daily activities. Now, female water snakes give live birth to their young with an average litter size of 20 to 30 newborns, and pregnant females are especially fond of sunbathing in order to elevate their body temperatures to the levels that will help their babies to grow all the faster. A water snake is going to play a starring role in this episode of The Night Sky as I tell you the story behind the Greek constellations of Corvus the Crow, Crater the Cup, and Hydra the Water Snake. Of the 88 constellations, 40 of them are animals, or 43 if you count the mythical ones. In fact, the word zodiac, which refers to those 12 constellations through which the sun moves, means circle of animals. Cultures from all around the world often incorporate animals that they are most familiar with into their constellations in various mythologies. The story of Corvus, Crater, and Hydra, a favorite of mine and many school kids for whom I do night sky programs, is an ancient one that goes back at least as far as the time of the Greek astronomer Eratosthenes, who lived from 276 BC to 194 BC and also appears in the poem Fasti by Ovid in the year 8 AD. One day in the long ago world, the god Apollo was making preparations for a sacrifice to his father Zeus. It seems as though water is a vital part of this offering. So Apollo gives a cup or crater in ancient Greek to his faithful servant, the crow, and tells him to go and fetch some water from a nearby spring. Laden with a cup, the crow flies off on his errand but he soon finds a fig tree filled with ripe, juicy fruit. The bird decides to take a break and stops to eat a few, but he eats so many figs that he soon falls asleep and wakes up hours later. Realizing that he's going to be in some serious trouble with Apollo, the crow looks around for inspiration in helping him to concoct a story that will sound just plausible enough to escape the god's wrath. His eyes alight upon a water snake sunbathing near the spring and the crow realizes that he's found his scapegoat, or scape snake as the case may be. Grabbing the snake in his claws and the cup in his beak, the crow flies back to Apollo with the story that the mean old snake had prevented him from filling the cup with water. Now, in addition to being the god of the sun, Apollo also happens to be the god of both prophecy and truth, so he sees right through the crow's lie. Now you should also know that the crow, up until this time, was possessed of both a beautiful silvery plumage and a lovely singing voice. As his punishment, Apollo strips these characteristics from him. Further, the crow, the cup, and the snake are placed up in the sky for all of us to see throughout eternity and to always remind us to never lie in order to cover up our own failings. If you watch the constellations carefully over the course of a night, you'll see that the snake, with the cup upon his back, is always drifting westwards across the sky, always out of reach of the crow, and always preventing him from getting a cool, refreshing drink, which helps explain why today's crows sound both hoarse and raucous. <coughs> the constellation of Corvus, which is the Latin word for crow or raven, can be seen in the southern sky every spring. During the month of May, step outside at around 9 p.m. 
to see Corvus rising above the southeastern horizon. But don't expect to see a group of stars shaped like a crow. Instead, Corvus looks more like a lopsided square. The constellations aren't always meant to be accurate representations. Sometimes they're just meant to be symbolic in nature. Corvus is rather small, coming in at number 70 among the 88 constellations in terms of its overall size. And while its stars are not especially bright, you can see it quite easily under skies with a moderate amount of light pollution. To locate it, find Spica, the brightest star in the constellation of Virgo. You can use a star chart or an app to help you out with that. Or just locate the Big Dipper in the northern part of the sky and follow the curving arc of its handle out to the orange-colored star Arcturus in the constellation of Boötes the Herdsman, and then extend that curve out about one more handle's length until you come to bright Spica. Corvus is below it to the right of Spica. Crater and Hydra are fainter still, and you'll need a dark sky in order to see them. Crater borders the western edge of Corvus, and its faint stars do seem to form a pattern that looks a bit like an old-fashioned chalice. The cup and crow are often depicted as being perched upon the back of the water snake, Hydra, not to be confused with the multi-headed monster with the same name who fought with Hercules. Hydra is the largest of all the 88 constellations and occupies 1,303 square degrees as it sprawls across the sky with its head in the north near Cancer the Crab and its tail end located southwards near Libra and Centaurus. Despite its vast size, Hydra only has one bright star, second magnitude Alphard, which is an Arabic word meaning the solitary one. So seeing much of the constellation will require a star chart and some very dark skies. Not unlike us, the ancient Greeks abhorred the idea of chaos and disorder in their world. Prior to the time of Socrates, they looked for order, explanations of the natural world, and guidance with such things as morality and ethics through imaginative stories like the one I just told you. Today, these stories are still popular, even more so with kids, thanks to works like Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson series of books. The myths of ancient Greeks are not just old tales that are irrelevant in a modern world. They're good stories, and they've withstood the test of time. And they're also stories with a purpose, having been written by very smart people in order to impart knowledge and to reveal to us certain truths about morality and ethics, as well as philosophical ideas. Through these myths and through the people who wrote about them, people like Plato, Ovid, Homer, Sophocles, Aristophanes, they have collectively helped shape much of modern thinking. The night sky has served as an inspiration and as a storybook for many such tales to cultures all around the world. And you can see them each night parading across the heavens if you just take a little time to get outside and look up in both awe and wonder.